This episode of Shadowversity is brought to you by my stupendous, awesome, legendary supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to support Shadowversity on Patreon, visit patreon.com forward slash Shadowversity. Shadowversity. Ratings, I'm Shad, and I love looking at how historical weapons are adapted into pop culture, whether that is in films, television shows, and video games. And there's a lot of videos you might be really interested in, such as if you can hang an axe on your back the way Kratos does in God of War, or if Deadpool is using the right kind of swords. So in this video, we're going to be looking at really the most, it seems to be the most iconic shield in all of pop culture. Oh yeah. Captain America's shield, baby. This is my stand-in for Captain America's shield, and you might notice something rather conspicuous about it. Uh, it's see-through. It's made of a mesh. Oh, you can see my face. Uh, so I hope you can use your imagination a bit, and that won't be too distracting, but hopefully you can also see it enough for the demonstrations that I'll be doing. Look, if I really need to show something like this, I can superimpose Captain America's actual shield right like this. Ah, there we go, we got the shield, hey, look at that. So that'll have to do. I could have made something a bit more accurate, but uh, I didn't have a lot of time, and uh, <laughs> it's interesting. This is the right oval shape, okay? So in terms of size and dimensions, it actually works pretty well, and uh, it's the lid of like a fire pit if you're wondering where on earth I got it. So what I'm going to be analysing in this video is how effective would Captain America's shield be just by itself, without anything else, because the rather interesting thing about how Captain America uses this shield is that the fact he rarely uses it in conjunction with another weapon. Now he does on the rare occasion. You see in the first Captain America movie he uses a handgun, and even in the comics sometimes he uses like an M16 and his shield. That makes a lot of sense. But for the most part, the shield is a weapon, which was rarely ever done historically. I'm not saying it's outside of the realms of possibility if you were disarmed, but this is not an effective weapon in by itself. You could use it to a level of effect, and Captain America's shield is not your regular shield, so that's what we're going to be looking at. And because I have to hold a sword at some point in this video, Ha! Shields in conjunction with weapons! Obligatory sword appearance in this video done, now we can continue. Well, to kick us off, what type of shield is Captain America's shield? Uh, in the, uh, you know, historical community, enthusiast community, even human community, all, all, all the communities where we like shields, right? We would know this and identify it as a rotella. It's got the oval shape as you see here, it is strapped onto the arm, and its size only extends, you know, a little bit past the elbow and fist, not, not excessively big. Contrast that to certain types of Viking shields, you, you could call it a skjolder or a parma, uh, but yeah, the classic round shield, they could be much, much bigger. So Rotella's generally smaller, not to say Viking shields didn't get a, you know, a little bit smaller than this as well, this is kind of on the large end of the scale, but yeah, generally much bigger. Would one of these other shields that you see behind me be a more effective shield for Captain America than his classic, you know, round vibranium one? Well, we'll get to that, okay? That is something we're going to explore. But first of all, I want to talk about the uh, effectiveness that this would be as a weapon in and of itself, okay? Why didn't people use shields as weapons in themselves instead of actually, you know, a proper weapon? Well, that's because it's very inefficient as a weapon for a number of reasons. Weapons are made to be force multiplied to increase the amount of damage that you could do by yourself. And there's a number of ways that they achieve this. One of the big ones is by having the striking end further away from your hand. And so thanks to rotational inertia, when I strike like this, the tip of the sword, uh, I'll move back so you can see that, the tip of the sword is actually moving a lot faster than just my hand is moving because of the rotation. See that? So much faster at the tip than my actual hand moving. So because it generates far greater speed, it also generates far greater force. And there's another difference with specifically a sword in regards to just the damage I can do with my fist. When I strike someone with my fist, all that force and energy is dispersed over the surface area of my fist. Contrast that to the edge of a sword. All that force that I can generate, which is even a lot higher, thanks to rotational inertia, is focused on a very, very fine edge. All that force on such a small surface area is so great that it actually is able to push apart material 
cut things very effectively. So much so that yeah, it can actually chop off limbs. So this logic of, you know, extending the striking end further away from yourself is uh, done on so many weapons, okay? We see it on the axe, we see it on pole arms. Your lethality is so much greater with a weapon like this than if there was smaller. Now, this also applies into weapons that are smaller, like daggers, for the reason of, you know, concentrating that force on a really, really fine surface area. So, does that kind of work with this, this type of shield? Well, one of the big limitations right off the bat is that nothing on the shield is extended very far away from my hand, so I'm not going to get that additional rotational speed that I can with a weapon that is extended. So when I strike with the shield, uh, I'm generally not going to be able to produce much more force than I could with a regular punch, but there is an advantage, and that is on the edge, okay? So all that force that I can generate in a punch is focused on a much smaller surface area than I could with my fist. And so getting punched with Captain America's shield is going to hurt a lot more than just getting punched by him regularly. Yet still, if Captain America was, instead of throwing a punch with his shield, was to throw an attack with a sword or an axe or anything like that, the amount of damage he could produce on top of what he could have just with his regular shield would be insane, like so much greater. Oh, but Captain America doesn't necessarily want to kill his opponents, he wants to incapacitate them, so perhaps that is why he doesn't use a more lethal weapon. And this logic actually could fit in quite well, because for the shape and size of the shield, like, it's not, it's not a very lethal weapon as a result, yet, of course, he has done some insanely damaging things with the edge of this shield when it's thrown and he can chop through metal with it, even. Put your hands in the air! There is another kind of attack that it seems fairly evident with Captain America's shield, and that's the one where he just kind of slams people with the face of it, just a big old whack kind of thing. Now, generally, that's nowhere near as damaging as if you were to strike someone with the edge. But because his shield can produce so much damage with the edge, it kind of makes sense that Captain America, he gives people slaps more often than kind of, you know, jabs. Now, interestingly, to knock someone off their feet, okay, because remember about surface area, with uh, trying to hit someone with the face of this shield, there's a much, much wider surface area than before, and so it's not going to damage people nearly as much. Again, kind of in line with Captain America's non-lethal, he's generally non-lethal, but <laughs> there are times he just full on, you know, kills people. Interestingly, hitting someone with the face of the shield like this would have much higher chances of knocking them off their balance than if he was to jab someone like this. So if there was a small thing that hit me right in the gut, say the edge of this shield, okay, all that force is then in my gut and a lot of it is going to be just pushed into my gut and I'll go like this, not necessarily be knocked off balance. But if that force is, you know, extended over a much greater area, so it's harder for my body to absorb that energy, I just can't move back in a smaller area, it'll just kind of hit me flat and the only way for me to go is back. And so yeah, hitting with the flat of the shield, much higher chances to knock someone off the balance, which is again, perfectly in line with Captain America style combat. The other thing about this is the defensive properties because Captain America is, like, first of all, is this even a really effective weapon for, to defend Captain America? Not really, it's actually a little bit too small. It's funny, every time Captain America is getting shot, no one's aiming for his legs, okay? Uh, uh, it's funny, there are some points in the movies where he crouches all the way down, protecting, trying to protect his whole body because the size of the shield is insufficient. There's other times where he just holds it like this and runs. Uh, what, what's not, what is not being covered by the shield at this point? Yeah, my legs. So it's not actually that efficient. But in regards to the position of always having the shield like this, it is in the perfect, you know, he's holding his arm in the perfect position now to do one of his main tacks where he runs up his defending himself, you know, a bit of a Hollywood magic there. But he runs up and he gets close enough, perfectly in the, you know, uh, stance, position, angle, just go whack, okay? Knock his opponent for ages. But in actual fact, I do believe Captain America would receive more benefits than detriments by increasing, you know, the size of his shield, even just by well, a little bit, maybe to this circumference, maybe maybe even a little bit bigger, Spartan level maybe. The, the detriment to this would be, would it be more difficult to maneuver the shield in close quarters, which he kind of does in some situations, like the elevator fight scene in Captain America Winter Soldier. But for the most part, he has a lot more more room to move. And so a shield of say this size 
might be a little bit better. It'll be a lot harder to, you know, hold on his back <laughs> that he regularly does. Maybe it's just for convenience walking around. His shield, this size shield fits on his back a lot easier than, say, something like this. But look at the defensive ability of this shield. Like, you know, holding it here, <laughs> it's only my shins really, you know, exposed. But if I extend it out, all right, how about this? Okay, there's a lot more defensibility or defensive capability uh, in a shield this size as opposed to his Rotella. Could still be made out of vibranium, still be much lighter, it could still be ovaled like this one is a little bit, and could he have it still strapped to arms? Because this is the other thing, okay, looking at Captain America's shield. There's a big contrast, uh, or there's a, a shields fall into generally two categories in how they are held, with some exceptions because there are some strap configurations which you can do both, which is strapped onto the arm or center gripped. The type of shield that generally has a strap configuration in which you can either slide through, hold it on your forearm, or grab it in the center grip is the kite shield. Kite shield has the most uh, handheld configurations out of any other shield historically. Now I'm looking at this, I really do think that they got it right, okay? For Captain America style of combat, having a strapped on shield is more advantageous to him than say if he was using a center grip one. Why? Well when you hold it on a center grip, there's a chance it will rotate. Now, in actual combat, that can be a huge advantage. Uh, I'll try and demonstrate. If someone gives an attack and you're holding a center grip shield and it hits on the side causing it to rotate, this can be a huge advantage because when the strike comes in here, rotates, you push it, now the shield is on one side of the opponent, they can just push fully out of the way. Now the opponent is over there, generally the back will be open, they can strike. And this is in so many situations, whenever a strike hits on the shield causing it to rotate, you just move with the rotation and you can do some really cool things like hitting around on the side, this shield is getting in the way, but generally, yeah, you got full mobility because of the shield's ability to move around like this. And it enables you to kind of ward away your opponent. So a center grip is generally far more versatile in combat than it being strapped on, but strapped on gives some advantages of itself that you don't get as much with center grip. First one being much harder to disarm someone with a shield strapped onto their arm than just holding it, okay? So yeah, big advantage. The next is you can take harder hits and brace yourself against them. Because just like I said, you know, being able to rotate a center grip shield, there are situations where that can be a disadvantage. I think overall it's a greater advantage than disadvantage, but that disadvantage still exists and it doesn't exist with a shield strapped onto your forearm. Especially strike like this, okay, his big wax, that is hell, that is a far more beneficial having it strapped than if it was center grip, because what would happen if you try to slap someone with a center grip shield? Well, if you don't hit the center of the shield and it's off center like here, the shield is going to rotate, leave yourself in, leaving yourself open, so slapping with like this is more detrimental. In actual fact, uh, if you really want to hit someone with a shield and you're holding a center grip, give them a good jab on the edge. So yes, Strapped on works better for Captain America. So another thing to consider, kind of going back to the first part of this video is, would Captain America want to use a primary weapon in his offhand as opposed to the shield? Because we did kind of see that a primary weapon would be able to produce greater damage, but does he need greater damage? Because he's able to do a certain, a lot amount, especially with the edge. The edge can like chop through steel and stuff. So perhaps he just doesn't need one specifically. He could benefit from one and he does, especially with ranged gunfire and things. So perhaps it could just be a matter of, of practicality. What about some different shapes, okay? Because we have the uh, heater shield here and we've got the kite shield here. Could Captain America benefit from uh, a shield like one of those designs over his round Rotella? Yes and no. You see, they, these shields, especially the kite shield, the kite shield offers far more protection. The uh, heater shield, not necessarily, okay? So in actual fact, no, I don't think the heater shield would be any better than his Rotella, but a kite shield offers far greater protection. What it wouldn't do nearly as well is being thrown, okay? And so this is where we again come back to the round shape. Uh, Captain America's round Rotella works far better because he can act like a frisbee, and that's one of his main attacks with his shield. So that again kind of takes the kite shield out of this equation. We come back to the shield he really already has, though I, again, I do think it could be a little bigger. Just to protect him a bit more, you gotta watch out for his legs, but that is not a big difference. And for the type of fighting a Captain America does where he wants to incapacitate people and doing direct damage and stuff like that, his shield is actually a very appropriate weapon, and it does give a decent amount of defense, and because it's indestructible, on top of that, like uh, its defensive capabilities are great, it doesn't pretty much, but overall, I think, you know, yes, Captain America's shield is an effective hand-to-hand -hand melee weapon in and of itself without an additional weapon. He can use an additional weapon, but just by itself, it works 
perfectly well for the type of character and the type of fighting that Captain America does. So there we go, this has been my analysis of Captain America's shield from a more historical and practical kind of perspective. Thank you for watching, I hope to see you again, and until that time, 